Hello everybody, it's Robbie and it's mid-May and this is my garden tour in Southern California of what is going on. I am starting to really go to town on my front garden. I've got dinosaur kale that this is like a little nursery. I stuck in a bunch of little pieces and it just took off. The other one is sprouting broccoli. So that's working out good. And that's my zucchini. Finally, it looks like I'm going to start getting zucchini. These are the tubs I'm send, setting up in the front yard. I'm getting to it, so little by little. I'm going to warn you, my garden is really trashed because I am pulling things apart, moving things around, and it is a work in progress. My tomatoes, this is last year's tomatoes. I did not plant any new tomatoes. And look at it, it's taking off. I built that trellis really quick with zip ties. I've got videos on that and how easy that is. And you could just build and build and build. You can make this thing 100 feet long. And I just threw this together and I started to hold it up and it just is taking off. Isn't that amazing? Okay, that's a little tall for me. I don't want to be climbing on ladders to be picking tomatoes, but I might just string it across and build something as it goes. So we'll see what I do. I never know, everything changes. I plan on doing something, I get out there and I do something else, but it is full of tomatoes, look at it. And right now I don't have really tool around it and that's that fine netting I use. Also I have videos on that. I'll try to get links up on that. If anything bothers it, I'll just put a little bit of tool around it. I've got tomatoes coming up in that tub. I, all I'm doing is setting up my containers. I compost in place. I throw leaves and kitchen scraps and everything. I top it with something. It could be, you could top it with garden soil you can buy at your you know, stores, uh, big box stores have them. They all have them. Home Depot, Lowell's, Walmart, they all carry it. Or you could put wood chips on top or grass clippings or get some leaves, dry them out, crush them and put that on top. That will work. But those are coming up as volunteers. I didn't plant a single tomato in here. Look at the trunks on them. Can you see the trunks? Look at this. Let's look over here. Look at how thick it is. I, I'm amazed how thick it is. This is just a garlic chives and this is just a, I think it's a piece of sprouting broccoli in there. So I'm going to leave it. It's coming up on its own. I feel that anything that comes up on its own really wants to grow here. And that is why I really like doing volunteers. There's good and bad pros and cons on volunteers. You don't know what you're going to get, number one. You don't know how much production you're going to get out of it, number two. But you know what? This is pretty good for last year's tomato, and I do believe that was a volunteer as well. Got a little cucumber plant down there that's just starting to throw cucumbers. Newly planted, look at that. And that's parsley from last year, and again, dinosaur kale. Now, the leaves are tiny, and I've talked about that because I'm letting it go to seed. I'm not collecting the seed. I don't have the heart to cut it down. If I cut it, let's say just cut it right here, Okay, let's, there it is. If I had it right here, the leaves will fill out and get bigger. But the hummingbirds feed off of it, and you know, the bees and the little native flies and native little bees. So I just leave it. I don't need it. I've got so much of greens growing in my garden that I like it to go to seed, and I, I prefer to have nature and all the bees and the, all the critters coming in, and that's what I enjoy. Look, I have flowers. Bought that at Lowell's, did a video on that. I actually ran into a subscriber there and she told me, you must buy flowers. So my flowers are doing really, really good here too. Red vein sorrel, and look at this. This is celery. I think it's called peppermint stick. You probably can't see it, but it's red. It's red and green. I have no idea what it tastes like. I don't think I've used it yet, but I'm sure it just tastes like celery. Here, I'm prepping and I'm going to, I get, I'm getting this ready. I compost it in place in those tubs. Those are like big flower pots you'd buy a tree in. I'm gonna put some zucchini, I think, in here. And of course my table, and I made this the other day and I had some little midnight snacks and they were doing so poorly. They looked like they were dying. I stuck them in here in a six pack thing I had and boy, did they pop back to life in this little homemade greenhouse. I'm gonna use a lot of those in the garden, especially our weather has been so unpredictable. 
almost got in shorts the other day. It started to get warm. And then what did it do yesterday? It poured. And not only did it pour, you would think, well, rain is good. It was so cold. The hummingbirds looked really cold. Everything was cold. Even some of the plants didn't like it. It got really, really cold. So it's just been unpredictable, our weather. So I'm going to use little greenhouses for a while until I know our weather is stable. Two more weeks, we're in June, and we've just been so cold. Okay, what's going on here? More flowers. Um, okay, uh, this has been that tool I put up. Oh, I don't know now how long. It is going strong. I haven't had to touch it up. I haven't had to rewire anything or put anything up. It has been that way since the day I put it up, and it is going strong. It has kept all the squirrels out and the rabbits. I had a rabbit out here yesterday. They're, they just won't go near it. Uh, they don't like touching it because if they touch it, they feel it's um, going to catch them. They think it's a net to catch them. They think it's danger, so they stay away. So it's worked out so, so good. Here is the purple tree colors I bought. Let me take one out and show you. Look at that. Doing good. Isn't that amazing? So I put them out here to get a little bit of sun today since it's not hot. And they're just doing good. I keep them in uh, up against the house kind of in the shade because I don't want them in direct sunlight until I know they've set root. And that's green sorrow. And of course all my walking onions are walking. Look at that all over. They're walking. I've got a little bit of orange mint in here. And here's the other one. This was the shorter stock and it's doing really good. Now let me show you over here. Sorry, swinging around. I had it sitting on there and I forgot to drill holes in that, which is okay. And when I, after the rain, I came over here and I pulled out my blueberry plants that I still have to figure out where I want to put. And I was going to dump that, but I forgot wood chips. That makes a great compost tea. So I'm going to go collect that and water some plants with that. And maybe I'll put some holes in there. Maybe I won't. It wasn't getting full of water because we hadn't had any rain for a week or so and it just started to pour. I opened the top on this. See? So the bees now can get in without a problem. I can pull this down anytime I want. But I just, it's so versatile when you're using clothespins. And again, I'm using my stakes that I use with the cable ties, the zip ties, and then a little bit of my masking tape. Look at that. Isn't this gorgeous? I just love it. I can just take that trellis and build it as big and as long as I want. Just keep going. It's like a Lego. You just keep adding and adding and adding on. And it's just fabulous. But anyways, going back to this, this is all doing good. I haven't seen flowers open yet here, but I am opening the whole top. So bees can get into this now. There's not a problem. And the tomatoes are just starting to throw flowers, but of course you can just tap on them. And they're pretty much self-pollinators. And let's see, this is peppermint. And I'm starting a new tomato there, which will go up. And I'll, having, I'll have tomatoes all the way on both sides. This is last year's plant. And it's throwing all kinds of flowers and there's tomatoes on it, green ones right now. So I'm gonna leave it. I mean, it looks like it's making a big comeback. It's from the bottom and it's going up. See how it's going up? I was wondering what was burping. Look what's burping. Let's see, my water fountain is just starting. It's just starting to get some sun. I've got some really good stands I make and that's not one of my better ones. And I've got to get a video on that. I haven't put them out yet. Look at that, it's starting to burp. It's just starting to get sun past the pine trees. And it's shaded here in the yard in the morning, early morning, and then it gets late morning sun, the garden, and then in the very late afternoon, it doesn't get the hot heat. So it works out really good for some plants. Let's see, what's going on here? This is my stevia, which is doing really, really well. We've been using a lot of stevia. We're back to making mint tea, and it's just been great. So this is all stevia I bought one time I think the original pot is in here. And I just separated it. There was a whole bunch of little plants in there. I just stuck them all over. They come back. They'll reseed or they'll just come back from the roots. And of course, this is my ginger and turmeric table. I've done a lot of videos on that. And if you know, if you're planting your ginger outside and it's still cold, try covering it. I'm gonna try little mini greenhouses out of milk con uh, containers and see if it maybe helps to keep the soil a little warmer and they'll sprout quicker but see this is a tomato cutting and it's doing really good there but so far it's just not warm enough it's not going to come up yet and then that's my 
tea plant that my friend gave me because he had three of them and they died. The two of them died, I should say. And this one was almost dead when he gave it to me, had no leaves. And look at this. And all I did was leave it in its pot and let it set its roots out. It's doing really good. And it likes it up against the wall. It's probably a little bit of warmth. And it's just not full direct sunlight. Lizards everywhere. Okay, now we are in the main garden. Again, please bear with me. I have stuff everywhere. I'm not the type to go prep a garden for a video. I don't do multiple takes. It's one take. If I mess up, that's what you're gonna get because that's me. Um, so here, I just wanted to grab my camera and do my mid-May tour. And I am not cleaning up because I am working. I've set that up, that's going really good, and it's starting, and of course I moved my tree collard. I don't know if you remember, I had it over on the wall, and it came up, it was a real tiny piece I put there, and just started taking off, so I moved it. That's the wall, there's that purple one I did a video on where I cut it. This was the part that had no leaves. Look at that, isn't that gorgeous? So I can put it wherever I want when I'm ready. I don't know where I'm gonna put anything. And then this is my new nursery. Oh, I have to stop this. Dino kale, kale, dinosaur kale. And I've been cleaning it up and I've been putting a whole bunch of pieces in there. I'll we'll get to that in a minute. And then these are my containers that are over two years old now, doing really good. I think I'm gonna take that broccoli out because I wanna be able to sit here and this is the best place for my table. But look at the lemon verbena. Isn't that gorgeous? Look how big it is. And you can do cuttings off of that. You have to take a woody, woody part of the plant and stick it in uh, moist soil and just baby it and it will root. I haven't rooted any because I don't need it. I bought a few plants a while back half price because they were really bad in the winter. And they've all come back, so they're doing beautiful. So I've got plenty in my garden, more than we need. And Gary's got one growing in his garden. They're even flowering. That the mushroom plant doesn't like the cold weather, so it's doing what it always does. It dies back. There's another one back there. It doesn't like full sun, so it's gonna be good here as the sun moves. It will get more shade for the summer, and then it will fill out and turn into a big bushy plant. I am doing cuttings on the mushroom plant and moving that around. Yes, that's my dinosaur kale, and as I'm trimming it back, that's the cuttings going into the nursery. Some of it is getting composted. It's just that it's so old and it's just so full of flowers that I just don't like throwing it away. But see, a lot of it is broke because it got too big, so I've got to trim this back. You really have to be somewhat organized. I don't really want a garden that's completely organized. I, I, I want it to be kind of like a food forest because I don't have to keep planting. Everything, it just keeps growing and growing. But it's, I just get sentimental with some of them, so that's the thing. But I also have to remember that I want to be able to maintain it and be able to get to food. I have lost produce because of leaving some of my plants the way I did. I had cucumbers last year growing around here. I couldn't get to them, but I'd find them half eaten by a squirrel or something laying somewhere else. So I've got to be able to get to everything, and that's really something you really need to think about if you're going to do what I do. That if it's okay with you and you don't mind, then don't worry about it. But I want to get this a little more organized where I can get into it. So that's what I'm working on too. And then more containers. A lot of these containers have been here for two, three, and four years. Uh, I've got cucumbers starting to grow on here. Now it is grabbing my tool. And I was thinking of taking the tool off, but it's so easy to work with it that I might just drape it somewhere and let it do its thing on the tool. The tool isn't gonna to fall apart, it doesn't go bad. And a lot of zucchini is in here and then volunteer tomato plants are coming up. And that's something, it's all volunteer. So I'm gonna leave that. And then that came up, that's a hybrid squash. And that was the first one on the property to flower. And there's even a fruit there. Now really I should grow more hybrids because that means it grew here it likes the temperature, it didn't mind the cold winter, and it still went, grew in my compost bin because it was a vegetable that I had eaten over fall, came up in the compost bin, I moved it there, and it's doing great because this is its home, it's born and raised here. So 
I'm probably going to keep some of the seeds from there and I do have some other ones I kept back and get more of those in because the zucchinis have been slower. They're just starting. I can see flowers coming up, just starting to make flowers. But again, the hybrid, being born and raised here, it's used to this weather and it loves it. That's a zucchini. Okay, let's keep walking through. And this is a lemon verbena. That's another one. See, I've got a lot of lemon verbena. I've got another one here too. The under here. That's why I don't need to do cuttings, but you can do cuttings, just get the woodiest part. But that one, for some reason, the rabbits were chewing on it. They chewed it to the ground, so I made a basket and put it over the, that pot, the flower pot. Well, it grew through the flower pot. You know what? I'm going to leave the basket. It doesn't hurt anything. It's staked up. And I know that no rabbits can chew around the trunk of it. So I'm just going to leave it right now. What else is in here? There is my purple sprouting broccoli. Success! And Kitty loves it. My Yorkie. She loves all broccoli. And that one is a keeper. She likes it. People have been asking me, where do you get it? Now, let me just say something. We're here in Southern California. I don't know if it's going to be all broccoli. Isn't that gorgeous? That's a scrub jake. See if you can see that. Oh, he's going into the bowl. I left him peanuts. That's his favorite. The thing with sprouting broccoli, the purple, is it took about a year to grow any vegetables. Now, it wasn't a total loss because we used the leaves but that's something, you know, I don't know if it's going to do it for everybody. I've got multiple plants around here. I have more purple sprouting broccoli down there. And all of them waited a year on the purple. On my regular green sprouting broccoli, that looks like a mess here because it's been throwing flowers. So the leaves are really tiny. That went and had broccoli right away. And I have broccoli on it usually all year. So as far as eating and wanting broccoli... I think the green was better. See, isn't that beautiful? Isn't that gorgeous? So it depends on what you want to do, but keep in mind, it's not a loss. And I, ha I am planting more right now. The purple sprouting broccoli, the leaves are good. The leaves are an excellent vegetable. So that's the main thing is if you just want something different, then go ahead and try it. If you want to have little broccoli to do stir fries or something right away, then maybe also plant some green sprouting broccoli. You can also force a regular broccoli plant. The ones that grow the big heads, all you have to do is when it starts to grow a big head, chop off the top. And then it will send the side shoots out. So you don't have to worry about that. You can actually make it do the same thing. I have done it. You just take out the main head and then it will send out side shoots. But there's all my kale. I've got curly kale in there. I've got a tomato plant planted underneath. It's coming through. Take my word for it, it's there, see? It's coming through the lemon verbena. Lemon verbena is here. The tomato plant is there, but everybody's happy. And then, of course, you've got the water that comes and goes as the sun comes and goes. The little water fountain that I built out of a bucket with a solar pump. And another tomato plant. Okay, let's keep going or I'm going to end up talking your air off and staying in one spot. Still debating on what I'm going to do here. That's what I'm saying. It's a work in progress. I cannot get back there. So I'm thinking of clearing out. I mean, look how gnarly this thing is. I mean, look at it. I could have shaped it like a bonsai if I wanted to. I just can't get over the purple broccoli and it tastes so good too. Isn't that gorgeous? It's just all over now. Now I've got all the purple broccoli I want. I'm not sure yet what I'm going to do, but I do have to clear an area so I can get in here. And I want to get more strawberries going. I can't get behind there. So I've kind of have to think about what I want to do. And if you see mint all over, this is chocolate mint. That's the strawberry mint. Oh, my friend's strawberry mint died. I told him, don't worry, I've got a whole plant for you. <laughs> so he's getting a strawberry mint. And then there's orange mint on the ground. Look how big the leaves are. They really like a lot of water. Isn't that amazing? They, want, they don't want their feet wet. They don't want to stay wet, but they like a lot of water. So it's got to drain well, but a lot of water and kept damp, not, not like a pond. You don't want to keep it that wet. Okay, I haven't planted in the tub back here yet, but I've got volunteer tomato coming up there. So I probably will leave that. And then I've got mint coming up. And like I said, this is, I've got a lot of stuff to do here and kind of analyze what I want to do. And then of course I've got my collard going through here. That's geranium, by the way. 
I put a couple small pieces in the yard once and it just took off everywhere and it's really too much for me. My roses! Bought that once at a 99 cent store. It's a miniature rose bush. And it's doing really good. Look at all the roses that are going to open. Can't see it back there, but I can. I have cleared a lot of this out and I'm still clearing it. I'm, I'd really love to cut a lot of the seed heads off and the flowers and get the plants to grow big. But again, if I do that, the hummingbirds won't have that extra food and all the other animals that feed on that, the different insects that you want, that, you know, so I'm leaving it right now. Even the dazzling blue kale, look how tall this thing is. It's like eight, nine feet tall. It's got beautiful, beautiful flowers. But again, you get all these beautiful flowers, which you can't eat. You can't eat it. It reduces the leaf size. Now, if I topped it, I would get all these little side growths growing, see? they would take off and then I would have a big bushy plant but I don't want to top it yet I'll wait until everything's done I mean even as I'm standing here there are hummingbirds zipping all over around me because all they want is the flowers they want to come in they want to take a bath they want to feed on the flowers and they also collect the little insects that get on these plants not really ready to trim it all like I said I've got so much greens look at all the greens I don't need to trim something to get more this is perfect and that's my water fountain and the birds come in there all day and that is an electric water fountain there's only two electric water fountains on the property all the rest of them are all solar and this is the other one that is an electric water fountain i could make them solar but you know when i got them they were electric so we left them and gary already has it all hooked up so i leave it that way okay everything on the ground that you see well this is oregano in this pot the oregano is doing really good i've got a giant plant on my deck i cannot believe it it must really love the weather and i also moved it must love the spot i moved it in but the rest of it that's that is all spearmint and i made tea yesterday gary loves peppermint tea and spearmint tea and i put a little stevia in it and it's just beautiful so that's all growing all on the ground there spearmint now i am going to have to trim it down because we do deal with a lot of wildlife living where we live and there are a lot of snakes so I have to be aware of that. I don't mind the gopher snakes, the racers that come through here, king snakes, those are fine. They don't bother me at all. But I've got to be careful because we do get rattlesnakes when the weather's warm. There hasn't been that many rattlesnakes yet, reports on the news, because it's been so cold. Normally we would have had snakes out and about already uh, uh, over a month ago. But I do want to trim it down because I have to be aware of where I'm walking. So. That will be trimmed down, not out, just down. Here is my pepinos, and I'm going to move this plant. And what's nice about that is I could either chop it out and compost it or move it, but because everything is in pots in the container growing, that I'm probably going to move it and figure out where I want to put it and just sit it anywhere else and maybe it will do better but right now it's got such beautiful flowers so I'm leaving that for the hummingbirds and the same thing look at all the flowers I would like to build up my pepinos I know it will get bigger and instead of having tool wrapped around the bottom because the rabbits had chewed on the trunk of the pepino I'm going to probably put stakes around it and run tool all the way around it either stakes in the ground around it on the outside or stakes on the inside but not just around the plant itself I think around the whole container and it will help that pepino take off and maybe bush into a really big plant. All right, let's keep on going. What's going on? More geranium. Geranium's everywhere. Um, volunteer tomatoes coming up everywhere, but that one I planted that's over there. And there's my curry plant. I trimmed it back. We really haven't used it, but I still like the plant, so I don't want to take it out. But I have trimmed it back. And then, of course, this is my collard that's growing wild. It's just plain old collard. It's, that's not tree collard. And it is just growing wild and it's throwing a lot of seeds and flowers. So, I'm again, I'm leaving all that. Now, if I wanted to, I could compost that. And I do believe that the seed heads that are green and the flowers make beautiful compost because think of all the nutrients that are in there. Think of how many nutrients the plant has to put into those seed pods. So it will feed the seed when it grows because the seed pods hold them and then the seeds themselves, they're gonna have a, you know, a lot of nutrients in it because it's like an egg, it, it, like an egg and a yolk. It's 
got everything in it to grow. So if you had to compost it, it would be great compost. And I might do some to trim some back, but I'm not going to do a lot right now. I am going to leave it for the birds because, like I said, all day the birds come in and feed on that. Look at this. Everything is edible except for the geranium, but somebody told me you can make tea out of it. I'll be honest. I don't like the smell of geranium, so I don't know if I like the tea. I don't like the strawberry mint, so I don't know. But it is, you know what? If it's edible, then it's edible. But it's just so big. I'd rather have other things growing there. Okay, over here, I got a tomato plant growing with some volunteers on the bottom. So we'll see what happens. Celery. Probably will remove this. It's kind of a hybrid sprouting broccoli. It came up from seed. And, of course, I've got collard and sprouting broccoli at the same time. And so the beads cross-pollinate and then you end up with these odd-looking plants but they're still edible. Lemon balm, it's still in the original container that I brought it home in. I just sat it there but it's gone into the you know into the soil in there. This I'm going to take out. It's just a radish or a turnip that went to seed. Sweet potato, I didn't plant it. Came up on its own. It's still growing. I just don't have anything else to plant there so I kind of left it alone. My red vein sorrel, see the sun is out starting to droop a little bit. But it is beautiful. We use this in our eggs and anytime we want greens. Oh my goodness. That is amazing. I came through here yesterday and was cleaning up the plant. Look at this. My red vein sorrel is what? Three years old? Time gets by me. Oh my gosh. This is going to be the first time it's sending up spikes to flower. I had read that they flowered, but I've never seen mine flower. So I'm going to get flowers on my red vein sorrel. I hope it doesn't mean it's going to die. <laughs> I don't think so, but I hope not. But it looks like it's sending out spikes. It has never done that. Oh, wow. Well, we'll see what happens now. I, what I find when, while I'm doing this, it's amazing. And people must think, oh, it's, you're just saying that. You, I did not know that was there. So that was new. That was not here yesterday. It must have just shot through the leaves. So we'll see what happens. Okay, more dazzling blue kale. Look how blue it is. And that's kind of gone out of control. As you can see, one is in the brick growing into the ground. See down there? And the other ones there, there's two of them in there. I think one was a cutting. It's just growing wild and just going up and up and up. You can do cuttings off of that. So what I could do is do cuttings and move it. Right now, I'm not working over there, so I can figure out later what I want. There's another tree collared back there. That's the one that kind of fell over and it's kind of making its way back up. So I'll see what happens with that. There's my other tree collared. That's, that one's just amazing. It's, it's just so big. Unreal at how big that tree collared is. And that one's between two compost and... I can't get back there. And this is what I need to change. See, it's between two bins that I compost and place in. And it just got giant there. And then this one got big because of the other bin that I compost and place. And it's between two bins too. So that one got really big. Now this one I'm having a problem with. Let's walk over here. Oh, this is my sun gold tomatoes. Made it all through the winter. And we had tomatoes all winter. And it just keeps going. I need to get cuttings off of this tomato because this tomato is excellent. And there's the problem. It is breaking. My fault. My bad. I got to get all this off. I haven't pulled it off yet because right now it's still slightly attached. And as long as it's slightly attached, it's feeding the plant. I need to set up a nursery where I can chop that up and get a bunch of cuttings off of it. And you only want cuttings when it comes to tree color. Because if it does go to seed, it will cross-pollinate with your other collard, with your other kale, and you don't know what you'll end up with. So when you have a good tree collard, you have to do cuttings. This thing is about nine, nine or ten feet tall now. But I should never have left all that. See, this one's going to be the next one to go. Plus we had, like I said, this happened, this one happened yesterday, and I think this one leaned, no, that one's from the other day. We had a rainstorm with massive wind. We actually had our strawberry fig tree fall over. So I'm probably going to have to get cuttings off of it. And Gary's going to try to prop it back up. Because, like I said, we've had crazy weather. It was just so cold. It got real cold and windy. It's probably when the 
hot air meets with the cold air and it created so much wind. We saw some trees across the hill snap off and break. So it kind of broke my tree color. My purple that I didn't realize got so tall again was knocked over, but I quickly taped that up with masking tape and that's doing good. Now that's too tall also. And now that I know it, they really propagate so easy by just cutting off segments. I'll probably take that down. It's just that I like the way it looks. Isn't that beautiful? I just like the way it looks. I can still use the leaves, they're way up there, but it doesn't matter. So anyways, that's what's going on in here. So again, if you were growing tree collard, what you'd really want to do is start taking off the small ones. That's what I've been doing. That's why I've got one on the other side of the yard. You just take them off, trim off most of the leaves, and stick it in a pot, and they'll grow. It sends out a lot of shoots. I can at some point top this and let it start all new growth. See? It will continue to grow new growth on the bottom. So I'm not sure yet what I'm going to do. It's my garden. I can just take my time and do it when I want to do it. Because once I do it, I can't change my mind. I mean, if I top it, I top it. It won't kill the plant. But I'm kind of debating on what I want to do. But I am going to have to get the ones that fell first. And there's four of them now. There was one the other day. There was four. And I would need to chop that up. And some of them might have to be chopped up into a bunch of small pieces. Okay. Oh, there's the sprouting broccoli. See, purple. That's the purple on the very top there. This one is the dazzling blue kale. Looks very similar, but that's the broccoli up there. And I better get them off before they open so we can eat them. And I only planted like four or six plants. I think there were six plants, and there's two in here, two on the other side. I forgot where the other one went. And I still have all the seeds. And they're still going good because I planted a couple more. I don't remember where I put them. And... Um, the, the seeds are good. So when you buy seeds and you're getting like a hundred seeds, you don't have to plant the hundred seeds. Save them. Uh, put them in a nice, cool, dry place and they'll be fine. They'll last for many, many years. Don't do what I did once. Store them on a shelf above your washing machine. Very bad choice of place. I put a couple seeds there once and the humidity from the washing machine will destroy the seeds. Put them in a cool, dry place and you'll be fine. And they can probably go for a good 10 years, if not longer. All right, what's going on here? Here I'm just still trying to set up and throwing leaves in there. I've got more of the dazzling blue kale. See the bees are on there and everything. Let's see if we can get back here. This is why I really don't want to take anything down. So yeah, let's see if we can see the bee. See, that's why I'm leaving all this because this is all for the bees. The butterflies have come in, uh, hummingbirds. So. I am going to continue to leave it. There's no reason for me to trim it. If you had a really tiny garden or you were a small container garden and, and you're, you are eating the food and surviving off that food, then absolutely, yes, you would trim off the seed heads if you're not going to collect them because it's your food and you'd want to make sure that it's growing to the best of its ability for you to get food and eat off of it. But like I said, I have so much. I'm I don't need to worry about it. I can share it with the animals that live in my garden. And then whatever's left gets composted later. All the dried seed heads that they haven't eaten or anything, chop it up. I mean, that's the wonderful thing about your garden. There's no trash. Not when it comes to your garden. It's all food for the plants. And if you really want to make some compost tea really quick, go ahead and just drop some of it in water, especially on a warm day. In two days, it's going to stink. Put it in a watering can, put some extra water on top, and water your plants. They love it. They absolutely love it. More containers growing here. I haven't even planted anything in here. This is all last year's. This is parsley, and it's going to seed and celery. And look at all the pollen. See the pollen? That's pollen. And then there's mint. That's chocolate mint. There is a Swiss chard, a green with the red vein. This is all just coming up. I haven't done anything. It's all doing its own thing. This is that collard plant that the rabbits hide in all the time. I'm thinking of trimming it back because it's getting tougher and tougher to walk by, so I'm not sure yet. And as I get to this side of the garden, I'm kind of working from one end and working my way down. I started on that end. By the time I get down here, I probably won't want to cut anything out. I'll think, oh, enough is enough. So I'm not sure yet what I'm going to do. Here are the Gary says strawberry papayas. Look at that. They had a hard time with the cold, but they're starting to come back now. 
and they're doing good. They're getting more leaves because they lost most of their leaves. And the, I've been putting wood chips and leaves. See, I put their own leaves back in there and they, it's doing really good. So we'll see. We should have fruit on it real soon because these won't be really big. So we'll see. And the moringa's coming back. The leaves are coming in. One minute it's doing really good, then it gets really cold, and then it stops growing again. Because remember, Moringa really likes it warm. My strawberry plants are doing really good. I want to set up more strawberries. And a lot of that that you see on the ground or in pots, those are garlic chives. They come up everywhere because they drop their seeds. So they just keep coming up. I've got another Moringa here. This tomato plant is a cutting, so I'll see what I'm going to do with that. It is throwing tomatoes. It's not in the best of shape, but it's the way it grew. So we'll see what happens, but it was a cutting. Just a cutting that came off of a tomato plant that was growing over there. Okay, let's go through here. I am now prepping my old broken container that I found in the trash. And I think it's going to last a little longer. So I'm going to let it go for another year. Because I grew a lot of cucumbers in this last year. And tomatoes. Right now I only put in cucumbers. So we'll see. I'm going to let it grow up this dollar store netting I got. This the birds won't get caught in. This is not bird netting. This is like a fence. I don't know what this is. So it's nylon. It falls apart really easy. That's why the birds won't get caught in it. It's not um, fishing line. It's not nylon. So it's probably not going to last long, but hopefully long enough for the cucumbers to take off, grow all over it, and I'll have a whole wall of cucumbers, or at least the vines. So we'll see. Oranges are doing, all the citrus trees are doing really, really well. Rosemary, let's keep going. This had a hard time. See how the leaves are getting powdery mildew. It's just, it's having a hard time with the weather, but it is coming back. Our weather's going to get warm. I know that. So it will clean up itself by getting these leaves brown later. They'll turn brown. We'll compost them, but look at the fruit. Look at the fruit. This tree had a lot of shelter all winter from this kind of weeping willow type bottle brush. So it really helped that tree. So any wind coming up or draft coming up through the canyon, that tree was a lifesaver for this papaya. Same thing for this one. I think it helped this papaya too. Oh, Gary had to put some tool on because something was getting up there nibbling and he suspected squirrels. And by putting on his pink tool, look at that coral, it stopped it. They don't touch it anymore. It hasn't been touched. They don't want it to climb on that is what it is. And oh, my pomegranate was a tiny, tiny little tree I put here. Grew it from seed. Look at that. But it got too big. I'm going to have to figure out something because I have a papaya I put there. That's a different papaya now. It was in my yard and I don't want the papaya in my yard. They get too big. I mean, you can see they get too big. And I don't want to be walking around the papaya. So I put that there, but I'm going to have to trim that back. And then this one's starting to take off. That's a little one that came up. So I'm going to have to do something with that. That's oranges coming up in, in the compost. Isn't that some orange trees? I don't know what they're going to be like. We'll see. And then, of course, this one's also growing pomegranates. And this is the one that had the hardest time, this papaya. Because of the draft coming up through the canyon, so it lost almost all its leaves. But you know, the fruit hung on good, and Gary put some green tool on. See, you can't even see it, probably. And that did help, but I don't want anything leaning on the tree, so I'm going to take and trim all the pomegranate back. Because that just, you know, you have something leaning, you're inviting something to think, oh, I'll climb on that and get to the top. So i got to get that trimmed. And a container, I don't have anything planted in yet. Okay, let's turn around and go to the wall. I planted a zucchini in the bathtub finally. I covered it so nothing will get to it until I figure out if I'm going to put tool or what around it. But I see I've got flowers. That is half by one inch wire. The bees can get through that no problem. I'm starting to prep these containers. I'm going to move them around. Really nothing new here. This is tomatoes that kind of went wild and grew all winter, which was great because it grew all over the wall. But I need to do a lot of cleaning. And the moringa came back beautiful here. This moringa is really happy because it's got the wall that stays warm, really warm. So it really helped that moringa. It, it lost almost all its leaves, but it did really, really well, this moringa. Isn't that gorgeous? 
Look how tall it is and beautiful. So I'm going to get more Moringa trees here because again they like the warmth and like I said I haven't done anything yet. I'm not on this side of the yard but I am putting containers here and trying to figure out where I'm going to place them, how far apart. I want to plant maybe more squash here and peppers because peppers really like it warm. And then I'm going to have to clear all the weeds out. This is thistle, but um, sow thistle. The problem is the goldfinches have been feeding on it. And I just, and even the squirrels come down and feed on it. And I don't really want to tear it out yet because it is throwing seed. And we use the greens when they have big green leaves. We use the greens in our green drink. So I will be doing that soon. By the time I get down here, I'll probably compost all that. Just throw it in the tub and that'll become part of my my uh, growing medium. All this stuff here, it's not going in the trash, it's going to go into those tubs. And there hopefully will be more tubs by the time I get here. And the truck bed. Well, it's still full of Swiss chard and I would love to redo it and grow all kinds of squash in here like I did many years ago. So I'm not sure yet what I'm going to do. But it's all growing good. This finally fell over. It's on its last leg. Look at that. That's a radish. That's a big old radish. And oh, there's a lizard there. He's hanging out. Let's see if we can take a look at him. We have rabbits that hang out in here and lizards and then the birds come in here and they nibble on it too. See, all my Swiss chard has gone the seed too. Now this seed is worth collecting. I don't know what color it's going to grow because it will also cross pollinate, but that's okay. It's all edible. And you'll get red and then you'll get kind of green and red and green. Gary prefers the green. He likes the green better than the green and red. See, it's all Swiss chard in here. That's all that's really growing in here. And then of course the avocado tree that Gary told me he's going to drop. Here's the problem. There's two fruit. I just don't think I want to bother with it. Two fruit set. And I have eaten fruit from rootstock and it's not good. If I leave this tree, and I really don't want to, it came up from seed, I will not be able to grow anything else in there. The roots from that is sucking everything up. That's why they have been struggling because you'll find the roots from the avocado tree everywhere. So I'm not here yet. Like I said, I'm working my way down the garden and I will decide what I'm going to do. Even this, I want to put a little, maybe some tool around it and save some of it. It's just a green Swiss chard and a green and red one that the seeds fell on the ground. It grew. I dropped this wire we had on top so the rabbits wouldn't eat it. Otherwise, they'll eat it to the ground. It'll disappear. And it's coming through the top. And a pomegranate tree that I came up from seed I stuck there is still growing. But I've got to figure out what I'm going to do and I'm not sure yet. So we'll see got a lot of work to do and I don't need the food so it's not like oh I have to have more Swiss chard. Gary grows beautiful Swiss chard in his garden. So I'm gonna see but I will say when we were growing spaghetti squash even though we got sick of spaghetti squash we did because we had like over 50 of them it grew beautiful it was all over the truck bed all over the ground. It was just growing everywhere. We had so much spaghetti squash. It grew just beautiful and there was the perfect environment for it. Probably because the metal of the truck stays warm and the squash really liked it. It doesn't get hot. It just you know stays a little warm and it must have really liked it but I can't grow it right now. I've tried and it won't come. It just won't take off it can't compete with the avocado tree. The avocado tree is not going to let certain things grow. So we'll see what happens. But anyways, that's it. I think in two weeks when I come back and do this, you're going to see a big change. And that's my guess because I see things changing right away. And there is Gary's bees. Yes, he wants a bee suit now. I can see the bees zipping around. And they've built a big comb, Gary tells me inside. A big honeycomb. How does Gary know they've built a big honeycomb inside and he doesn't have a bee suit? Because he's in his bees all the time. He says the bees like him. They're very calm. So he's happy. He's got his bees. He's been wanting bees. So with that, I think I've talked your ear off. 
And this is going to be way longer than I wanted for a mid-garden tour. But you know what? I just love the garden. I think everybody needs a garden. You really do. It's, it really makes you feel good to come out to the garden, leave your cell phone in the house, and just enjoy your garden. Pick up a hose, water the plants, collect some of the brown leaves. If you don't have a place to put them, put them in a, in a tub. See, I have tubs everywhere, floral tubs that I get. And I just put them in a tub, and then when I know where I want to put it, that's where I put it. Because you don't want to throw that away. Brown leaves is gold. That's plant food. That's compost. That's soil. So that's it. You know, and it's, it is relaxing. It's, I, I can't believe how much I love gardening. And it's not just gardening. I'm, yes, I'm growing food to eat. I haven't bought greens in forever. <laughs> I don't even know when. So with that, I am going to say goodbye. I've talked too long. You'll see me soon, don't worry. But in two weeks, I think there's gonna be a change because the squash is starting to grow, tomatoes are starting to take off, and it should start really changing because it's, it is staying warmer at night. Isn't this a beautiful tomato plant too? It grew all winter we had tomatoes and it's just growing and growing. I'll be building a trellis for that thing too. So have a great day and don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye everybody.